Hi everybody and welcome to my studio. We are going to be painting an awesome project on this video and I can't wait for you to paint it. It's one of my most favorite and I probably say that about everyone but it really is one of my most favorite that I really really have loved doing. I think because it kind of came around by accident and I didn't have to think too hard about painting it. So we are going to be doing my oopsie daisy. This is on a 12 by 12 gallery wrapped canvas. We go over the edges. Not that, well that edge has a tiny bit going over it, but mostly this edge and the top edge. And look at that flower, so beautiful. I cannot wait for you to paint it. Acrylic paints, we're gonna get started. So let's go. Okay, we're going to start this project. I have my 10 by 10 canvas. Um, this is not a deep one, but I did make the pattern long enough on um, the upper and lower petals that if you did a, a more deeper canvas, more wrap around, then you could extend those petals on around. So I'm going to lay this, plus this will extend around the edge. I'm going to lay this where it is. where a little bit of that part of the line drawing is laying over. We want a, a space out here and just adjust it to wherever it looks um, appealing to you. And you can reduce this if you just want it to fit right here on top of this square right here. You can reduce that. Um, if you've got one of your um, You've got one of my uh, proportional scales. It will help you uh, figure out how to adjust it based on the size of the pattern or the size of the canvas, whatever uh, you want to use the measurement from. That looks a little bit crooked, so I'm going to straighten it out a little bit. And I think I want it to be more up towards the top, like this. So these petals would be going over if we had the deep wraparound canvas. I did paint it on a deep one. I'll bring it around. We're not going to paint it exactly like this one, but um, see I wrapped it. This is a deep one. This is a 12 by 12. And I just wrapped it around the edges there since it's a deep one. And um, so that's how you can do that still looks a little crooked here so you're just going to get it on here the best way that you like it with whatever petals are going to work for you and you're going to put your gray graphite graphite side down underneath here and we're going to trace all of our petals now we don't have to worry about the folds right now we just want the petal shapes and then our center area we kind of need to know where it's going. It's going off the side, so we'll just take it up to the edge there. And then just trace all of your petal lines, the outside edges. Do not worry about the folds. We're just going to do all of the um, shapes. Now you want to try and not get your um, transfer lines too dark. If you do, come back with a um, eraser and erase them back because we're going to be putting light colors on here and we don't want to have to worry about trying to cover up some dark graphite lines and this one goes over the side all right so let's see which ones I've traced and which ones I haven't so you'll do this all the way around. A nice light tracing. Just enough for you to see it. Nobody else has to be able to see it but you. If your canvas is very textured, some canvases can be pretty textured, then I would say take a, a really super fine piece of sanding pad and um, sand it just a little bit to take some of that texture off. And that one's going to go 
over the side there. And then I've got this one that comes behind here, and we're going to have to paint part of it on here, so we want to at least know that's there. And I am going to go ahead and put my petals going over the side, even though it's not, you know, a, a deep wraparound canvas. I'm still going to paint on the edges because I do not plan on putting this in a frame. So I need to know where all of my petals will be ending. And then over here on this side as well. Just do the best you can. You can always come back with a pencil and just transfer some lines on with a pencil. So we've kind of got our lines on there. They're not super dark. We know where we're going and we can adjust petal shapes as we paint them in. So now we're going to work on painting the uh, background back here. We're going to paint it first. So we're going to mix a color of paint for this. Now if you have pink, no, no, that's for, that's for the petals. For the background, <laughs> I'm just getting way ahead of ourselves. Um, I'm going to put apply a coat of open water around all of my petals. So um, I'm just going to go off camera and do that because it's just basic painting here. Nothing fancy about that. When we come back, we're going to do some... Uh, paint blending and stuff, but for now you're just going to be painting in your background with this color and we just need one coat because we're going to be applying a, more layers on top of this, so just go around your, your petal shapes and paint the entire background in with open water is the color. Alright. Okay, so I've got my first coat on here. It's not 100% dry, but I did go around my edges here where I uh, felt like there would be gaps between the petals, and we can always come back and fix all of that when we figure out exactly where our petals are going. So now we want to start doing the blending in the background. This is where it's going to come in very handy to have two brushes. I have two angle brushes here. Uh, they're both half inch angle brushes. Um, so two would be great. One you can use with the dark colors and one you can use with lighter colors. So on the palette we're going to put a little bit more Salem Blue out. Oh, that wasn't Salem Blue. Yeah, it was. I want open water. <laughs> okay, Salem Blue is on there, but I don't think we're going to use that one. We want open water. And turquoise blue. If you're doing the great big 12 by 12 deep wrap canvas, you can use the um, Salem blue um, as you get farther out on the edges around the wrap around part. But I think for this smaller, less deep canvas, I'm just going to use um, the open water and turquoise blue but this one will be on the list as an optional color to use in the background, okay? We're also going to need Midnight Blue. We'll need quite a bit of that, so I'm going to put a good little puddle of that out. Of course, we may not need as much on this smaller canvas as I did on my other canvas. I needed quite a bit. And then some black. Okay? So those are the colors we're going to be needing. I'm going to spritz my palette over here with some water. So as I need water, I can just come over on the edge of my palette and get some. It's all right over here, keeping that moisture right there. Okay, I'm going to load my brush with the Deep Midnight Blue. I'm going to tip in to the black, just on the tip, the toe of that brush. This brush 
I'm going to load with the open water and then on the heel of this brush I want the turquoise so I've double loaded both brushes okay so we're gonna work a wet into wet technique here get a little bit of the moisture on my brush and we're gonna go around our petals and we'll work this paint just a little bit at a time because we want to um, keep it as wet as possible but going around some of these petals will take us a little bit of time. This one's shaped weird so I'm going to adjust the shape of that. So I'm just going to pull that out a little bit. I'm going to lay that brush aside and I'm going to take this one and go right into that dark color and now I'm going to lay it on my paper towel to get the excess paint off and then just begin tickling those two colors together where they meet and nicely blending all of that out and this is what we're going to do all the way around so we may need that lighter Salem blue here so I'm going to load again with my deep midnight and tip into some black a lot more black in there. We want it really dark next to our petals. And I'm going to work that out. Grab this brush, load the open water and heal into the turquoise blue and come in here and begin to gently blend out as you pick up some of that darker color just go tap your paper towel so you're not taking it out farther than you want we may want it to come out farther by the time we get done with this but for now we want to keep it where it's at um, you can come back and do as many layers of this as you need to but this is a very easy way to get a nice modeled effect on your canvas that out a little bit, grab some open water and turquoise and put some on there, gently blend and then wipe off and then I just I just barely tickle the brush across there and let it blend. Okay. Tip it to some black. And you want to try and work as quickly as you can when you're doing this type of blending because you're doing it in such small um, segments on here because you want you don't want your um, paint to start drying you want to be able to work wet into wet so we don't want any paint to start drying remove the excess paint and then begin to gently blend and work that paint out. Definitely going to have to come along that edge with that lighter color, so we probably will need that Salem blue to blend out a little bit. Tickle across. It's already starting to dry right here, so it's getting a little bit tacky, so I have to be extremely careful going across any tacky areas because it will start lifting. So I feel like we're getting a little bit of a hard line right there. So I'm going to take my, I'm going to grab some water and take my uh, deep midnight blue and put a little bit of that in there and then take my other brush and blend that out just a little bit. Just a soft blending of color. Now on my other one I did do this twice. Um, because I can already see that that darker color needs to pull out just a little bit. So we will do this one time. We will let it dry. And then we will come back and repeat. Grab a little bit more black in there. Ooh, that was a lot of black. See if I can go all the way up to this one. Grab a little bit more blue. I feel like I've got way too much black now. Right, I'm going to pull this out just a little bit farther than I have been. 
get my open water and my turquoise and again working that in wipe off because I'm picking up dark color and I don't want to keep moving the dark color where I don't want it wipe off anytime you pick up a little bit of dark color on this light brush you want to go um, just touch your paper towel and let it kind of come off the brush okay on our second coat we'll come and scrub some of this darker color in through the background where we have more open gaps Just a dot of water. My paint is not wanting to move. Now I feel like I've got too much. It's making my paint too transparent. So our open water was just an under coating of color. If you don't have open water, you can just use the turquoise. It will be fine. Just a scooch. Let then get the dark paint off of my light brush. Okay, we're just working our way all the way around this canvas. It may be dry on the other side by the time I get done here. Try not to shrink your petals as you go around them. You want those nice big petals. All right, a little bit of blue, a little bit of turquoise, and we'll blend that out just a little bit. It's a little bit harder when it's up on the corner like this, but try just try to stay off of your petals. If you get onto your petals, don't stress out about it. Just um, take some white paint and cover them back up. We're going to be painting them with a different color here in a little bit, but um, we want to have them white to begin with. So if you need to put that white back on there, you can certainly do that. All right, let me come over here and do this edge that, and I'm not gonna worry about those areas right now. We'll take care of those here in a little bit. I need just a little tiny bit of water. If your paint doesn't want to go on very easily or smoothly, you do not have enough water in your brush. All right, I'm gonna grab my just turquoise for this side. And that paint up there is already dry. So I'm going to take this brush and just gently scrub and blend. Okay, so while that's finishing drying, I want to finish up my edges out here. So I'm going to go into my turquoise and put the heel into that lighter blue. And we'll put the lighter blue out here on the edge and the turquoise up here on the top. I'm doing the opposite I did with the blue previously. I'm, oops, oh, wrong blue, turquoise blue. Now, if you're just doing something flat, you can you can just use the two blues. So I'm going to wipe off my brush and grab a little bit of water, so I can just simply blend this out. Now, this is our first layer here, so don't get too caught up in how it looks as we go into our next coat it will work out and i just want turquoise here and so up here i'm just going to take my brush with my dark color and just scrub that a little bit okay all right so we're getting a nice um buried background here um, I'm going to let it dry and see how it looks when it dries. We may just need to scrub out some 
um, of our darker color on there a little bit. So while it's drying, let me clean these brushes out really good. I want it these places next to our center. Um, I'm just going to fill them in with um, some deep midnight blue at first, and then when I come back with my second coat, it will just be black because this area is super dark back in here. So any places where we have a gap between our petals, we want to fill that in with some dark color. And this will also help make our flower pop more forward. Okay. wherever you have these little gaps these petals just connect to that center so it won't all be filled in through here this is going to help give it a little bit more depth in the painting And then if you have the, the wraparound kind, you'll, you'll want to make sure that you, you know, don't forget to do those areas, the part that comes over the edge. Okay. So our center here, we're going to put a layer of <coughs> plantation pine. Just right there in that center. We don't want to put it on our petals yet, so just try and stay within the shape of the circle without creating a hard line on that circle, you know what I mean? We don't want any ridge of paint up here, so keep that um, smooth out there. This is just underpainting right here. So this goes over this edge just a little bit. Not a lot, but um, you know, you can make it go over the edge as much as you want. So that's just plantation pine. Get off my petal there. And our background looks pretty dry, and I'm, I'm liking the effect that it has, but I want to do some scrubbing, so I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to take most of the moisture out of my brushes, okay? I'm going to load up with this um, dark blue and just barely a little bit of black. We don't want a ton of black doing this one. Oops. Oh, I have to re -glue my brush there. And then we're going to, I'm going to put a little bit more open water out. I'm going to load in with some open water and tip into some say, uh, turquoise blue. And I don't want a lot of paint on my brushes, so I'm going to go to a dry paper towel. I can find where I put it. There it is. And I'm just going to lay each side of the brush on the paper towel. This one doesn't have a whole lot in it anyway, but I want to make sure we're not leaving a lot in here. We're going to come around at the end and float black around our flower. But this is a way that you can work some of the darker color. Let me get just a drop of water. It's drying in my brush. We can scrub some of that. I think my paint dried up in my brush before I could do anything with it. 
So start in your dark area up here and then just scrub a little bit of that out into your your design wherever you want to have some darker colors in there. And then oh, take this one if it hasn't dried out and just scrub right next to it right into that dark area. A little drop of water and you can help blend that out. This works best on a canvas I think because of the textures on the canvas will really grip the brush and help it to um, create more texture in the background. So that's how you can pull some of those colors out into your background. So I'm going to load my brushes. And do some down here. Just pull some scrubby scrubby. black and that blue. You can mix your black and your blue on your brush and then you won't be laying down like dark black somewhere where you don't want it. And now I'm going to take this one and scrub some of that in there. I'm going to wipe the excess or just tap the excess paint off and now I'm just going to very gently scrub those wet into wet and blend them out. If there's some area that won't blend, grab a little drop of water and that will moisten up the paint that's right there that you just put on and you can blend it out super easily. This is a super fun technique for doing backgrounds and I don't want you to be afraid of it because it's just paint and it's, it's really, really a fun technique and it's a great way to teach you um, a different way to use your brush and how to um, manipulate paint a little bit. Okay, I'm going to load some of this. The turquoise. Tap it off. And then you see I'm just turning my brush because I know I'm picking up dark on the toe of that brush so I don't want to pull all that dark out here. So I'm trying to keep the toe of the brush more towards this dark stuff that I put in and then I'm just kind of scrubbing and blending that out. Grab a little dot of water that we sprayed on our palette and then we can smooth any edges out that we don't like. Right there I need more dark. So I'm going to grab a dot of water, a little bit of paint. in there and then come back with this brush and just manipulate that little bit of paint and scoot it around and just play with it. This is very light pressure. I am not scrubbing super hard at all here. So now with this area right here it's going to be mostly dark so I'm just going to dampen that and then go into my blues and I want to work some blue into this area right here. I feel like it, it lost all of its blue. So I'm going to lay some in. I'm going to remove onto my brush and now I'm just going to scrub a little bit of this with my light colors with my light colored brush and then I'm going to come back with my dark color and put a little bit more in there. Back to my light color and very gently scrub and let those kind of blend together. Such a fun, rewarding technique, and I hope that you guys are trying it because it is super, super fun. So here I'm just going to scrub a little bit of blue in there and kind of create a little bit more texture right there. And I think over here I'm just going to scrub a little bit of light color right there. Maybe grab my dark, dark brush and a little bit in there. We're doing wet into wet, but we're using a little bit of water with it this time to create that more mottled background. Okay, if you just want to paint your background a solid color, then you can certainly do that. Um, but don't be afraid to try this uh, technique. It is so much fun. So much fun, so rewarding, and I think it just looks beautiful.
Okay, so now we need to let this get dry. It's, um, it's drying very quick because I just put a, a really thin layer on there. Um, so it shouldn't take too much, too long for it to dry on our second layer through there because we didn't really put much paint on there. We just scrubbed a little bit of paint in there and gently blended it out. Um, I am going to go ahead and put a second coat in the center here. Get all these colors out of my brushes. And then we're going to start painting in our uh, petals. And uh, so let's get our second coat in the center. And the center is mostly, this is just under painting here, but we need it dark in the center. Underneath this. And I might add, you know what, I think I'm going to add a little bit of black in there. Um... Let's see. Let's see what I did. Yeah, let's mix some black in there. I'm going to put some more plantation pine out. I do. I did type up my instructions earlier as I was painting that other one, so I did add some black in there. We made like a black green. So we're going to do that because we want this to be dark in the center underneath when we come in and put our other stuff in here. Keep it dark. Always helps if you read your instructions. All right, keep it soft on the edge out here. We don't want um, hard lines going on out here. Okay, so there is our center. That's looking good. So now I'm going to fill in those spaces in between with just some black now. These areas in here should just take a thin layer of black. And you can still mix it with some of that blue if you want. Make it a, a black-blue color. Totally up to you. But it needs to be a dark color. And just the blue is not dark enough. So it definitely has to have some black in it. That midnight blue is a little bit of a transparent color, which made it work really good out there in the background for scrubbing and blending. And you know, you can use your old brushes when you do that scrubbing out part. But it really is a super fun technique, and uh, I hope that you are going to give that a shot and paint along. If it's, you know, you end up not liking it, then, you know, you can just paint it out. All right, I'm going to paint my little areas down here. This is part of the background, sort of. Maybe grab a little bit of teal. Or turquoise, I guess I should say. Pop some of that in there. This would be more of the blue, the background out here. I'm making a mess of that daisy there, petal. So let me fix that. I'm going to grab some of my blues and just with this small round brush I can take this and just blend it out enough. It's just a small area in the corner so we don't have to try and make it perfect. Okay. Looking pretty good. Loving the background, and like I said, that scrubbing out texture works so much better with um, a canvas than it does on wood because the canvas will grab the brush and leave color behind, and you know, it just is so much fun. Okay, we want to paint in our petals now, and we're going to paint them in with um, a very light pink. Now, um, if you have like the color pink chiffon, you can use that color. I did not have that color, so 
I'm going to mix white with a little bit of baby pink and we want to get this really really light pink color so it's mostly white that's what I had left over from my other one so it's mostly white and we're going to do just a small amount of pink I'm going to put it over here and then I'm going to use my palette knife and I'm just going to take a little bit of that pink. I just have a very small amount of paint. And that may even be too much. We just want to make a very pale pink. Once you paint it on here, it's such a light pale pink. Uh, it's really a little bit difficult to see the pink on the, on the canvas here because it's so light. Especially when I took pictures of it. It's like I couldn't even tell it was pink. But... Um, it is really just the lightest, softest pink color. Not tons of color in this, so don't um, get carried away with putting a lot of color in there. So I'm going to use this that I had left over so I don't waste it, but we're going to paint in all of our petals with this. We'll put on two coats. We'll do all of the petals except for the ones that are dark. Now, if you um, just look at your uh, picture and you can see which ones are dark, or you can choose which ones are dark. So the ones that are dark will be painted in, hang on, let me paint this edge here. Um, the dark ones are Dragon Fruit and Snow White mix. So Dragon Fruit and Snow White. You'll do two Dragon Fruit. So let me show you that mix. I'm going to go off camera and get all these painted. So that's probably about two. And then we'll do one. And we will mix them together. make this really pretty. Make sure you mix them well. It's almost the color of Pepto-Bismol, I thought. So, And then this color goes on the uh, petals that are dark pink. So I did four or five of them on my big canvas. So like this petal will be a dark pink. And again, we will be applying two coats all the way to the center okay and then um, let's see uh, I think hmm, this one I will make a dark pink Try not to get into your background. Try to keep it just on that petal. Um, this one will make dark pink. And like I said, you can pick and choose. I made back petals the dark pink, not the ones on top. Um, but it's your flower. If you want to switch that up and do one on top, the dark pink, go for it. Let's do another one. Let's do this one here. And if you're doing a wrap around canvas, um, especially a deep one, you'll probably want to do one along the edge over coming off the edge. coming off the edge there and um, I would probably do one over here if I was doing a wraparound canvas um, maybe like 
like this one over here, which we won't see this one on mine, but um, you know, on the top. But uh, that just kind of gives you a flow of the colors. So we want to get all of our other petals painted two coats of this light pink mix or pink chiffon if you have that. I'll put it as an option in there. I'd really like for you to learn how to mix paints. But And then this one is the dragon fruit. Two dragon fruit, one white, and those will be your dark petals. We're going to get all of them base coated in, come back, and we're going to start adding details. Okay, I've only got one coat on my light pink here, but I've decided to um, make another dark petal on here. And so I'm going to make this one dark because even though I have one over the side over there, we can't see it on the top. And it is uh, more pleasing to the eye if you have odd numbers that are, um, you know, in a, in a design. So we're going to do the, let's take some of that and mix it in. We're just going to go ahead and paint this one right here, this dark color. And that way we'll have four of these, or five of these, uh, on the top of the canvas that we can see. And that will make it just a little bit more pleasing to the eye. So um, I will try to, on um, the line drawing, I'm not sure if I will get that done because really it's an option for you, whatever you want to do. You can paint them all the light color if you would like to. Um, I just felt like having some darker ones behind um, really helps make the flower pop more. Um, so if, you know, you don't have to do the exact petals that I do. You just want to have some done but, and they need to be ones that are behind. All right, so I want, to, and now that all of my coats of paint are dry, I want to take a, a pencil and um, draw in where my folds on my flower petals are going to be. Now, I am using uh, one of Lana's favorite chalk pencils. Um, it comes with pink, green, and white lead, and I have three of the pencils that I just keep, and I keep pink lead in one, white lead in one, and green lead in one. So I don't have to uh, switch my leads back and forth depending on what I'm drawing on. So, <clears throat> excuse me, this, we're going to work on the dark petals first and they have, are, this one is folded on both edges towards the end back here. This one we can't really see the end of it up here so we're not going to worry about it, but if you're using a deep canvas like this one you will see the top of the flower petal so you'll have some folds on it okay and then um, this one down here will be all along the end it will have a fold this one I'm thinking right now I'm not going to put any folds on it and then this one has one here and then a little fold right there so I just drew it on with my pink lead now while we have the pencil we might as well go ahead and draw in some of our other folds on here this one I can still kind of see my pencil line where I put it on when I put my pattern on so it goes right along the edge of this flower petal So it folds right there and the flower petal itself comes out back here. Okay? If you can see your pencil line still on here, that is always a big help. Okay, so this petal also has a fold down here towards the bottom. Several of them are folded at the bottom. Okay, and then there's those two petals that are side by side. Then this one is folded on each side down here at the bottom so it's starting to curve in. This one has one here and then um, it's folded at the top comes in and then and you can make your folds on your petals any way that you want. This one has none. This one has one there. Um, this one I don't have any on. Uh, this one is folded 
down here at the bottom going up towards the top and then at the top here it's got a little bit of a fold then we have this one that's got a fold and it can kind of come around that one if you want to um, so just you get to be the person who makes all the decisions on your petals so don't feel like you have to this flower petal comes up it's really shaped different okay and over here this one over here has a fold this one is folded at the bottom and this one is actually has a fold at the bottom I'm going back and looking and make sure I didn't miss any bottom folds here. So you can actually just put your pattern on and transfer your pattern lines on if you would like to. And this one will be on each side down here at the bottom. And this one looks like it might have a fold here because that looks like the edge of the flower right there. It's coming over the side, so it's not got a lot going on to it. And then this one has a fold here. And that one does not. And then you can choose on the ones that come over the side if you want to give any of them a fold and make them a little bit more interesting. Okay? So let me make sure right here, this one should have a big fold on it. Starts up here comes down, goes around, and there's the edge of that petal right there. So um, drawing them in with a pencil first, something, I like these pencils because they erase with paint or water, so once you get paint on them they disappear. You could also use a watercolor pencil that's in a light pink, something that you could still see. Um, but you don't want to put anything really on here that won't go away with water or blend out with water because then it will get set in your project and we don't want those dark hard lines in our project. Okay, I'm going to take a um, small flat brush. This is a 6. It is slightly damp. You can use it dry or slightly damp. Totally up to you. I'm going to load some baby pink into it and then remove the paint and I'm going to dry brush this into the center. I've got still got too much moisture in my brush so I'm going to lay that on my paper towel and keep a damp brush handy for like when um, like right there I just went over into this petal. I mean this is the color we're going to use for shading on here in a little bit but I don't, I don't want it in there right now. So I'm going to pick up a little bit more on my brush and remove excess paint on my dry paper towel and then just brush some of this in. I'm just dry brushing, creating a little bit of texture in these flowers, these petals here. And I have one over here on the side so I might as well put a little bit in here. That's for just if you don't if you don't put a frame on it and you hang it on the wall, you like for it to kind of go around the canvas. It does not have to. Don't don't feel like you have to do that. Your canvas can just cut off right there and you can paint the edge this this dark color here, this dark blue would be appropriate. So don't feel like you have to um, do that at all. Okay, we don't really need any down there because that's going to be all shaded. All right, I think that's good enough on there. So now we're going to start shading. And we are going to mix. Now you can just brush mix if you like to brush mix. I personally like to brush mix because whenever I just mix some paint, I always mix way more paint than I actually need. So um, I prefer to brush mix mine, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to mix. So we're going to do two parts dragon fruit one part berry cobbler and we're going to mix those together and I got some kind of 
chunk stuff in there and move that out. And this will be our first shading color. All right. So let's start adding some floats of color in here. Grab your favorite floating brush. I think I painted the majority of my bigger one in with an angle brush and um, I don't generally use an angle brush but since I got these um, from Dynasty, these black silver ones and these faux squirrel ones, I love both of these brushes. I really love the faux squirrel one. But um, I think I have some of these on my website. I'm not sure if they're this size or not. But um, I have just recently uh, started selling them. Um, see how that goes. And I'll get more variety of brushes in as I move along and see how things are going to sell. But I really do like um, this particular brush. So let's load up for a float, which means you have moisture in your brush. You are dipping the pointed corner, or if you're using a flat brush, just either one of the corners into the paint. And I work it into my paint, into, on, into and up into my brush just a little bit to get it kind of soft. I would rather have um, several light layers than one really dark layer. So we're going to start painting where this fold is with this mix and start creating some depth and shadows on our petals. Go along each side. I'm going to load a little bit more. I'm going to pick up water on the water edge, paint on the paint edge. I'm going to blend them both in my brush, touch my paper, my brush to my paper towel so I can remove excess moisture and excess paint off of the tip because I don't want to lay down a dark color in here. And we're going to go right along this petal and right along this petal. I'm just pulling the toe of that brush along there. All of this down in here is going to end up being dark, but for now we'll just kind of fill it in and let it fade away up here at the top. Okay. So that's some first shadings on there. This one over here, now if you're painting the 12 by 12 canvas, you'll have, yours will go over the edge and you'll do just like this on the end, the shading. But this one is just kind of tucked behind these other petals here. So I'm going to keep, keep it a little bit darker. We can have it just light in the middle or that you know it's it's not completely covered with the shading from the other shadowed out I guess by the other two petals beside it and go along your edge okay so let's come over to this one and it's got a couple of folded places so grab some water on the water edge of your brush and some paint on the other side and then we're going to create this fold right here. And then we'll shade a little bit along that edge right there. And right here next to these two petals it will be dark because it's behind those petals. Okay. We're going to come and add a little bit on the outside edge of the fold, but let's get all of these other areas in here. And these are the back petals, so, you know, they won't be standing up on top, so don't make them front and center because they are behind everything. This one kind of goes over this way, so I think I'm going to bring that pink one a little bit, close those two up a little bit so that it makes it look like this one is going back over there behind it, but we can't see it because these other petals are in front and on top of it. So we got a little fold there. This 
has a little fold on this side. I'm going to grab just a little bit of water. My paint feels a little dry. If it doesn't want to move and paint well for you, it's dry. Okay? And then I've got one that's kind of over here on the edge, so I'm just going to shade that. And we also want to put a little bit of this color, make sure it's down here where, it, where it's going to be connecting to the center, if you can see that. Okay, I'm going to wash my brush out and get the moisture out of it because I want to do the outside edge. So I'm going to pick up a little bit just a tiny bit on the toe of the brush and just put a little bit around this outside edge. We don't want to fill that in at all, so don't fill it in. We'll go and highlight in there when we highlight. So we want to give that, that gives it a little bit more rounded folded look when it has just a little bit of darkness out there on that edge. We want to do all of our folded edges this way. I'm really up on the, the tip of this brush, just using a tiny little bit of paint to go along. And this one will be a little bit harder because it's much narrower. Okay, we want to make sure it's dark right where it kind of goes back behind another petal. Lock this in place here. Okay, that's looking pretty good. So I'm going to put some dragon fruit out on my palette now. I'm going to put it right beside my baby pink because we're going to mix those two colors and uh, I am just going to dry brush or um, brush mix these. So we are going to um, use an equal amount so that means I'm going to dip into my baby pink and dip into my dragon fruit and just mix them together. It's, this is going to create our first highlight in here and we'll do along the edge of our turned or our folds I guess. Okay, I want to um, just pull a little bit of this up through the petal. You know, it can kind of look like some veins in the petal. Alright, so I am going to be straight up and down, just kind of lining it with the tip of that brush. But because I worked it into my brush and made it soft, it's not going to leave a... Um, definite hard line. So I'm just going to go along the edge and pull a few. We probably won't see those when we're all done, but they're in there, so I'll try and stay out of my shading. Just give a little bit of a illusion in there. Alright, I'm just brush mixing a little bit more here. I'm going to highlight on the outer edge of this one. I need a little bit more baby pink in there. I'm not seeing that highlight, so I'm going to add a little bit more baby pink in there. There we go. We want to definitely see the highlight. Okay, so then on this one, up on the tippy toe of the brush, just putting a little bit of paint in there. We'll put a little bit right there. I'm going to turn it around because this will be easier. A little bit on that folded edge. And then I'm just going to streak some. I like to streak a little more into these. Ooh, that's really bright. Then do your um, ones that are over the edge, if you're doing that. Okay. 
We're going to add some lines in the center with our mix that we mixed, the berry cobbler and the dragon fruit mix. That's what we shaded with. So I'm going to put that on the toe of my brush and just pull some. Use that water edge to kind of soften them down and not make them big bold lines. Start in your shadow area, that kind of helps because that, it's the color that we shaded with. And we just pull, just pull a few up through there. I feel like these all are the same height. I don't, I'm not really liking them being the same height, so we're going to highlight down in there in a little bit. Okay, we want to darken the shading on these pink ones. And we're going to do that with just the berry cobbler. So I'm going to put a little bit of that out. You don't need a ton of this paint out, so don't... Um, just squirt a little bit at a time. If you need more, you can always squirt some more out. But You, know, you don't want to be letting it dry out on your palette and, and feel like you're wasting it. So all down in here, it's going to be darker. On this one, it's going to be pretty dark down in here. And then we're going to darken our um, shading under here, but we don't want to go the full length. We just want to um, put a little bit in a couple of places to kind of determine where the darkest areas are. Because if you put it in the whole section that we created on that fold, then you kind of start losing your depth on there. So we don't want to do that. Okay, so we're going to do this on all of our petals. Just darken a little bit. Okay, so this one now, where, where one petal lays underneath a, another one, you'll definitely want to darken that. And make sure you can, if you can lay your brush flat, you do that, because that creates such a soft float on there. When you can't do that, then that's when you get some hard lines, so you really have to practice being able to float on the tip of your brush. Okay? So let's create some really dark shadow areas underneath this. That's a little wide, so I'm going to take my water brush and kind of work that in and take it down. So we got a little bit darker on that one. This one here will be a little bit easier because it just needs to deepen the shading. Right here will be the darkest. Okay, and then this one will be dark down in here. I did widen that one a little bit. I'll have to put another coat on there. That's why we made plenty of our base color, because if we had to go in and fix something, we had that base color mix. So if you mix quite a bit of it more than you need, just put it in a small container. Save it for in case you need it, or if you want to paint another one of these. And uh, I'm thinking about doing one in some blue colors, but haven't quite decided that yet. Okay, so that's pretty dark. I think I want to darken it just a tad bit more down through here. This one has really got those other two petals that are coming in on it so much. Okay, and then on the outer edge, you can do just a little bit, but again, don't let it take over and do too much. Okay, put 
it back up like this because that's the way that it goes. Okay, we're going to dry brush a uh, brighter highlight with the Snow White and Baby Pink mix. It's going to be an equal mix. So I'm just going to do that on my brush, that brush that I highlighted with earlier. So my little, you can use an old scruffy brush on this if you want to. I know I got paint there. But. So I'm going to dip one time into the baby pink, one time in the white, and just blend them on my brush. Go to a dry place on my paper towel and remove. Okay. And we're going to dry brush a little bit of this through here. We don't want to cover up all of our beautiful work. This is just a very light tickling of color in here. Just a little bit. Don't get carried away. Okay, we'll also take this color mix it on our brush and add a little bit more brightness on our folds. Oops. Stay on the folded area. When you're using a really large angle brush like this, just stay up on the very tip of that edge that has the paint on it. This is how you learn a very good brush control. You're in charge of the brush. The brush is not in charge of you. Okay. And the other ones we can't see anything on. I'm going to take this brush and streak just a few little streaks down through here. I'd like for them to be a little bit thinner than that, so don't get too carried away. Just the edge of my brush, whatever paint is left kind of on my brush. Just put a few little streaks in there. Okay. Then our final brightest highlight on these is Snow White. And again, we're just going to do a little bit on here. And put some of this in here. Is the bright area. Maybe not up that high. This one just is going to get it on the edge because that's where its bright place is. streaks through there, maybe a streak through here. Okay, I think that's going to take care of our dark ones. Um, if we need to, we can always come back with our berry cobbler and do a second shading on here. Like I feel like right there I could use just a touch more. But I think overall it's looking pretty good and we're going to be ready to move to our light pink petals now. And it's just going to be a lot of repetition of floating. So I don't want you to get um, discouraged by that. This is a very good practice floating piece. So I think you can have a lot of fun with it because we're not using crazy dark colors. We're keeping things soft. Um, we keep that beautiful light pink color on this. Uh, we don't want it to get dark and out of control. We're going to start on our light pink petals now and we want to put out uh, baby pink. This is the color we're going to begin our shading with. Spritz your palette with some water. That's going to help. I 
always good to have a moist brush when you're floating. And we will begin to side load for a float with our baby pink just on the toe of an angle brush. I painted almost the entire design with just this angle brush. Alright, I really want to work that into that corner of that brush. I wanted a nice soft color. I don't want this going on crazy dark. Touch my paper towel, wick off some paint, and then just find where you want to start and we're going to float right there. I'm going to take the water edge and kind of narrow that down just a little bit. And then that will be a little highlighted there because it goes actually in front of that flower. Grab a little bit of water here. I want this to stay nice and light and soft. So if it is going on dark and you're not getting this beautiful blend that is coming out on here, you don't have enough water on your brush blended in with that paint. This outside edge will have a little bit on it. This is the folded edge. And you can start on whatever petal that you want to start on. But keep that water in your brush. Keep it nice and soft. And a beautiful color. We have to come back and do that edge there. I'm going to go ahead and, and start on this edge here. I need some water. It's starting to uh, get a little dry, so just pick up a dot of water and blend it into your brush. And then we're just going to continue all the way around all of our flowers. This one has a folded edge that comes all the way down. And we'll darken it right here because that petal goes over that one. Grab some water and a little bit of paint. Now anytime there's a little V area like this, you're going to push the paint into that and then you're going to walk the brush out rounding the brush and creating that nice soft area in there. You don't want to just, you know, stay with some straight painting there, you know, pulling it out. You have to do that little bit of rounding on there so you can get that nice, beautiful look of a a dimensional um, petal. This is just along this outside edge back here. Okay, lots of, no, well not lots of water, but your brush has enough water in it that we round this out. Push it into that V and round it out. edge here before I forget. These darker petals are behind all these other petals so we want to make sure. Actually that, that edge right there should be highlighted so I'm going to take some of that off. That, that needs to be highlighted. It just needs to be dark down in here. Keep it off of your dark one there. bit on the outside edge of the fold. We'll let some of these layers dry and then we'll come in and do down here where it goes into the center. Need some water and paint. I'm running out of both on my brush here. Nice soft float. Um, larger brush is going to work best really work that into my brush with some water so that water can dilute it just a little bit and keep it a nice soft color. Okay, we're getting some nice nice form on our petals here. Now 
be pretty dark down in there by the time we get done with it. And we'll go around this petal. And this petal. And then this one has a little flipped edge. We don't want the whole entire center of this to, to become the pink coat, you know, this darker pink. So take the water edge and kind of blend it out if you get it filled up in there. We need water and paint. I've got a wild hair going on this brush here. I might have to stop and trim that off. this out into this flower just a little bit or this petal along this edge it's darker on that folded edge and then I haven't done this folded edge here yet and it doesn't have to have a whole lot on it uh, we, we really need that to, to pop so we could leave that all white there Just a little bit. When you're doing this outside edge of the folded area, tilt your brush up so you're just barely on the toe of that brush, scooting some of that paint along there. Okay, then this one is here. More water, more paint, then blend, blend. There's one of those V's. Push it in there. Pull it out. Rounding it out. That little V area right there. It's looking beautiful already. Nice soft float here. Just along the outer edge, just uh, slightly. Do not fill that in, that folded area. We don't want it filled in. We just want a little bit in there. And we can come up and touch if we get into our dark areas. We can come in and touch all of that up. So don't worry about that. Even if you get some in the center, on the center area, don't worry about it. We'll come in and clean all that up. just go around okay so I've got a, another petal back here that kind of goes off the canvas that's right here so it will be mostly dark Now we're just working our way all the way around. It's just the same all the way. That's going to be lighter out there because that is that petal is on top. And you can pick and choose which petals are on top or on bottom unless you can really just see that one is on top of the other. If you can't really tell, then you get to be the judge of your painting. couple more over here, these ones that kind of are over the edge here. We've got one that's in between these two here. And we can just, it'll be mostly dark. And then you can create a fold on one of these if you want. I might just create a little bit of a fold on this one. And this one does go behind this one, so I'm going to 
boat along the side here and pull it into the pedal just a little bit. And then I've got one more on this edge. out. All right, let's go into the bottom center areas. And that's a little dark. Just put a light wash of this in there along the bottoms. Next to the center. We're going to come in and put some green in there here in a little bit. So don't, uh, do not get this very dark. This needs to say, stay extremely sheer. When I first started out over here, it's a little bit darker than what I would want it to be. Okay, we're looking pretty good. I'm going to take this same brush and uh, load again for a float. And I want to pull some of this color into my petals for like some lines that are in them. Again, we're going to keep this soft and not stress out about it. Just a few little gentle pulls into there. Shape follow your petal. This needs to be a very, very sheer. That one might have just a few too many, but they're in there now. I'm not going to worry about taking them out, although I could take them out very easily and very quickly. Okay, that's looking really good. So let's get a little bit of plantation pine out now. Get all this pink paint down my brush here. Okay, plantation pine. We'll touch up this area here, so if you want to put a little bit of black out, you can. And again, we want to keep a nice sheer float, so that means, you know, water in the mix. Water in the brush, I guess I should say. So just dip the corner of the brush into some green, some plantation pine, and work it into your brush with that water that's in there nice sheer color. We don't want any water on our ferrule, so if you've got any on here, clean it off. Nice soft color. And we're going to come in and put this into the base of our petals and pull it out just a little bit. And we may come in and repeat this. I want you to do a, a sheer float of this if we need to add a second layer on here, we have that option, but if you get it too dark, too quick, um, then we don't have that option, and um, it'll be a little bit harder to balance out those colors. So pick up your water on your brush and a little bit of paint. You blend them together. You're like making a wash on your brush is what you're doing. But you're not having a big puddle of a wash there. It's, you're just creating a little bit at a time on this. And this is just our first little layer here. We've got to come in and darken our shading so we don't want this very dark. Just a very, very, very sheer color. Do all your petals, even the dark ones.
All right, I'm gonna mix a little bit of that green with a tiny little bit of black and touch up where I got some paint in here where I didn't want it. We want this center area to be pretty dark. And you know, after we get done painting all of our petals, you can come in and touch that up. Okay, we're gonna darken now on um, all of these petals. And we're gonna do that with a mix of um, uh, bah, 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 baby pink and dragon fruit. So two baby pink to one dragon fruit. So if you wanna mix a little pile of this to have, you can. I am going to brush mix because that way I don't use as much paint. I don't waste as much and brush mixing is very easy. One, two, one. That's our mix right there. Two pink, two baby pink, one dragon fruit. And as you start painting it on here, if you cannot uh, see a difference, then you can add just a tiny bit more dragon fruit in there but um, I think this might be good I'm gonna test it out here and see if I am going to like it and it's not too bad I think we'll come in um, after we're done with this layer and do just a tiny bit of dragon fruit underneath some of our darkest areas. I'm going to pull some of this out at the base. Again, nice um, sheer layering of paint here. So you work a little bit of water into your brush, you have water in your brush and you work it into that little mix of paint there. So, and I'm not going to do every place that I did. I want to start just defining, oh, I didn't shade underneath this one at all, so. Where is it? This one right here, this little turned edge, I didn't shade under. I'll just do that real quick. Go back into my mix here. Okay, this is that B area, so I'm going to push it in and then round it out. Water. And this color is just a little bit darker than what our first shading was, so it's going to help help us keep a nice soft color here. I definitely need more water worked into this. Goodness gracious, I'm having a rough one here. I think because I was just trying to do that in all one big giant swoop and that was too hard. She just broke it down into simpler leaves there. Anytime you get more than what you think it needs, you just take your water edge and clean that up. some nice depth in this now. Yeah, this is behind that petal there, so this is the one I pulled a little bit of that darkness out into the petal, just by kind of walking and scooting it out. Go 
just the edge of that just a little bit. Mix some more, grab some water, blend, blend, blend. Keep the paint on the toe of the brush. Touch your paper towel before you go to your project. That's going to be highlighted there. Okay, you're not going over the whole shading. I don't want you to feel like you're doing every bit of the shading all over again because you're not. You're just um, creating some of the darker shadows within the petals now. We're going to come in and highlight in just a minute. Grab some water. Keep it nice and soft. And this petal is behind, so it's pretty dark back in there. Just a little bit. Not too much here. A little bit darker in there. So that is our second shading and actually some of this color, this mix, mix some more back on my brush here. We will take this and put a few darker ones into our petals. Some of these you won't see any of these lines in it so don't let them have hard ending points if uh, it becomes that way then just um, take the water edge of your brush and smooth those out okay that looks good so now we want to highlight on here with some white and then we'll come back and redo our green down here. Now the white will, it, depending on how light pink your mix was, the light might be, the white might be a little bit difficult to see. So I'm put a lot more on my brush here. I think I might have too much water in it. So depending on you know how light your pink is will depend on how well you can see this highlight and we probably will repeat it because the first time will definitely not be bright enough. So just it's best to start at one edge. I started at this one now I'm going this direction. Just remember where you start and where you're headed. A little bit down here. We're going to put some of that green in there so it might come up and cover that a little bit. We definitely want the outer edge of this one to be pretty bright. And a little bit right here. Ok, 
Okay, so this will be done twice. I'll do it just once on camera. I don't want this video to be hours long. And then I'll go off camera and repeat this highlight. And then we will come back and and do our green down on our bottom and then start working on the center because we should be ready to start on the center then. Get your turned edges, they have to have that highlight on them. about done with the first one here. And this pill is over the top. And it's over the top here. here. These two are not separated enough. Okay, that looks much better. Alright, I'm going to go off camera and put my second coat of white on here. Then we're going to come back and add some green, more green on the leaves. I've got my second coat of white on here. I'm going to take my brush with some white and just streak some. I don't. This may not show up on yours at all. It's not showing up too well on mine. But I'm just going to streak some through the center. Give a little bit of highlight. Do not add water when you're doing this because you want just straight paint here. But I am just side loading it. I need to deepen some of my fold areas. So I'm going to take just the dragon fruit, really work it into the toe of my brush with some water, and um, get a nice soft color of this. We don't want this crazy dark. I need more. And we're just going to create some depth in our folds. Be a little bit more depth. Or one lays behind one. Right here, this little corner right there, that's going to be a little bit darker. It's going to have a little bit more shading in there. Our folds. This is just in a couple of places. We didn't do very much with our last one. We're doing even less with this one. So don't let it get carried away. Okay, right here will be darker. Right here. Here. Keep 
that water edge nice and wet so that you can smooth out any areas you need to. This should be very quick. This should not take you any time at all because you're putting in just a little bit of paint in just a few areas. Small, small amount of paint. Need a little bit more water in my brush here. right there. That gives us a little bit more depth in the design. Okay, I think I really feel like I've gotten that particular petal too dark, so I'm going to take some of my base color and work a little bit of that in there. To our maybe a little bit of darkness in there. Okay, and you can add your bright highlight on here as many times as you need to. Um, my white didn't show up tons, I don't feel like. So let's take our plantation pine and we're going to go back into our petals here. This is still just a nice wash of this color, just pity pat. Bring it up into each petal individually. Put some more water out here on my palette. a little bit. Don't get crazy here. We can come back and darken it at the end if we look at it and that green is not quite where we want it to be. We can adjust. We can always add but we cannot take away. That looks pretty good for now. I'll just leave it right there for now. We're definitely going to have to touch up our dark areas between, but um, not to stress out about that at all. Um, so mostly we've just used an angle brush, which is pretty awesome. So now we want to do the center area of the flower. And um, we are going to use the color that we uh, base coated the light colored petals in with to make our um, little dabs for our centers. So let's take our paint here that I mixed up. I put it in a little container so it wouldn't dry out. And we're going to take this paint, get some of the moisture out of my brush here, and um, We're just going to start creating some little four or five petal dabs in here. And we don't want big gaps in between them, so make them as close to each other as you can. And they don't have to look like anything in particular. Um, to me, when I was looking closely at the center of the flower, it almost looked like little tiny little flowers in the center. 
and as we work our way out they can have four they can have five you can make you know a, a larger one that has several on it like that one has like about seven on it um, because the um, the picture I was looking at um, had some like that and we will eventually get bigger as we work our way out to the side out there the farther out we go the bigger they will get if you get too big of a gap in in between just go back in and put a few dots in there it's not going to be wrong See, I just did two right there. Don't start them out crazy big. We, we want to build them bigger as they get out there, but they're still not ginormous um, areas. And I want you to try not to think too much about this. I know it, um, some of us that are very particular about how we paint um, will um, be very particular about how these go in. And I don't want you to do that. I want you to be a little bit of free here. Just dab in some paint and try and leave a little bit of gap in between, but not huge gaps so let me fill in a little bit over here because we're going to start working out a little bit and getting a little bit bigger and they're just like little clusters okay so I'm going to start getting a little bit bigger not ginormously big. But bigger than what we started out with. Still just little dabs of three, four, five, whatever comes off of your brush, however you create it, it's going to be perfect. Once it is completed, and don't worry about going past, especially in those dark areas, or even on the leaves, because we can touch, or the petals, because we can touch up. all of that stuff. so I can keep you on camera shot, hopefully. Like this one here is on that pedal right there. I don't want it to be, so I'm just going to take my damp brush and that off. Give it a flat edge there.
These are seriously just little dabs. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. My other one went more off of the canvas a little bit. All right, so now we are going to, I'm gonna go ahead and touch up my black out here and you can add some blue in with it if you want to. Or some green in with it would be okay. Here's where if you don't like the shape of a petal, you can fix the shape by Oops, stuck my hand right in the paint. Try not to do that. Just touching up here. In case we got paint where we don't want it. And this is just with the black, okay? So we really need those to get a little bit dry. I'm going to put out some white and um, I have some of our pink out here but let me get this dry real quick. Okay, Let's take our plantation pine and we're going to make a little wash of this color so I'm going to take it and move it down here and I've got water in my brush I'm going to go pick up a little bit more I just want a little wash of this color and we're going to wash this all the way around. Make sure your center is dry before you do this. All the way around the outer edge here. Just on the center area. We don't need to put it back on our petals unless our petals are not dark enough. I think I'm going to add a little bit more plantation pine in here. I want this to be pretty dark. I might have to mix a tiny bit of black in there, really darken this up. Okay, that's probably pretty good right there. Now we're going to take our dragon fruit and create a wash of it. So a little bit of paint and a little bit of water and you blend them together, make a nice sheer color. Is this the color we're using next? Okay, yes, dragon fruit. And we're going to put this in here. I'm going to let that dry a little bit. I'm going to put some berry cobbler out because this is the color that if you're shading on your flowers is not popping enough or on your petals. You can go in here with just a tiny bit of this color and put it in here and make some of those really deep dark folds pop a little bit. I'm not sure my instructions said this so I will go back and check my instructions. This is just a couple of key places. Do not put it everywhere. Just a couple places you want to look really dark. Okay, you know a deep it's got more shadow on it there than any place else. Ooh, 
It's a lot of paint there. Take the water edge and clean up. I'm going to darken that right there. I feel like these little V's need to be just a little bit darker. Lots of nice little shadowy stuff going on there. Just do this while the center gets completely dry. Just a couple of places. I'm going to use this color here in a minute on our center. looking pretty good. I'm not going to uh, overwork that, so a little bit right there. So that looks pretty good right there. Okay, so now we want to create a wash of dragon fruit. And I might, um, not dragon fruit, but um, this berry cobbler. I think I'm going to redo, add a little bit more of my dragon fruit wash on here real quick. I want this to be kind of pink. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now I'm going to make a wash of this berry cobbler. And start with some thin layers. We can come in and add darker layers as we build. But we want this to be light at first and see it's a, it's blending too much with what we've got there. So I'm going to add a little bit more paint in my washi mix here. And I want it to go out to the green, but I don't want it to cover up my green. So if it gets going out there too far, take your finger and wipe that back. bit more paint in my mix. I want this to be really dark. And it's going to come over here. So our lightest area is going to be right here. Okay. And then let's see our last step is to put a little dot of white in the centers and you can do just the ones that are in the highlighted area more or you can do them all I think I did them all and then I think I might have went back over with another little wash in the dark area to tone it down just a little bit Optional, of course. You take a look at yours when you get your little dots in here and you decide, and you don't have to do them all, so don't feel like you have to dot them all. Some of these in the brightest area, you might want to go back and give another little layer. And that pretty much is going to finish this out. Let me wide angle out. So the last thing that you want to do, I'm going to lay this down on my table here. 
The last thing you want to do to this is check how everything looks out here because if it is not um, very appealing looking, you've got paint out into your background. Take some black and a little bit of your midnight blue. and clean up right next to your flower petals just wherever you think they need it and try not to get it into your petals themselves keep a clean wet brush in case you do so you can take that out very quickly is also where you can shape the outside edge of your petals just a little bit better if you need to. finish that design so for right there I feel like it needs a little bit darker okay now I see a place I need to put a highlight that I forgot to put a highlight right here along this edge because this part of the flower is our petal is over that so shape it a little bit and then just check everything that it's where you want it to be looking pretty good. Got a little bit into my highlight there, so I'm going to clean that up. So just clean up any place that you need to. This is also going to brighten my highlight just a little bit. I think it's looking pretty good until I did that. Don't get into your green down there, so if you do that, just wash a little bit of it in there. And I think we are looking pretty good. Pretty good for calling it done, I think. You can certainly play around with it and, and uh, keep working on it, but I think I'm going to call this one a done. I'm going to pull over my big one that I did. This one is on a 10 by 10, and I did one on a 12 by 12, so I'll see if I can get them side by side on a camera shot. And then I did water drops here, so I'm going to show you how I did a water drop, but I'm going to do it on this one because I don't want to add water drops to this one. So the first thing I did was I took a pencil and I drew my water drop where I want it to be. Not really sure where I want it to be here. And I'll just put it... 
on this one. So it's kind of an elongated shape. Let me zoom you in here. And um, grab, I'm going to grab a small brush here. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is float around the outside of it. So um, we're going to do that with our baby pink. So just side load a small brush with some baby pink. Nice soft little float of this and we'll go around our water drop there. I'm going to take my eraser because now I know where my water drop is and I'm going to erase that line on there. I didn't paint over that line, at least I tried not to, so if you haven't painted over it you should be able to erase it. If you can't, uh, when you add your shading and highlighting inside the water drop you can do that. Okay, so we're going to float inside the water drop with our baby pink. I probably should have made a bigger water drop here for you to see. So I'm going to float on this side, just mostly in that big bubbly area down there, and then just walk it up the side. I'm going to clean my brush off and go with some white. And I'm going to put that over here on this edge. And they can kind of blend together where they meet. I'm going to take the um, dragon fruit now. And I'm not sure I put this step in there. I can just repeat with the um, baby pink if you want and go a little bit on the outside here. I have too much paint, then I have not enough paint. I'm kind of staying up on the tip of the brush so I can keep that, you know, nice and tight against that where it just comes out just a little bit, enough to make a, you know, a, a shadow from the water drop. Okay, I think I need to put a little bit more baby pink in here. And you can put some dragon fruit inside, I think on a couple of them I did. Just a little bit of darkness in there. Oh goodness gracious, I can't get my dragon fruit to load on my brush for nothing. And just a little bit in there. Don't uh, don't let it get too crazy dark. And then we're just going to take our white and I'm going to put a little bit more up in here and then I'm just going to put a little you know, little dot or something down at the bottom where the light looks like it's coming through the water drop. And that's pretty much how you make a water drop. Not a whole lot to them. Um, I know, you know, you can, you can, you know, get really involved with water drops and make them intense, intense study of water drops. But uh, just for some quick water drops, these are good enough. And, and I have some lines in here I still need to erase, it looks like. Um, but that is um, pretty much it for this project. So here it is with water drops. Here it's without water drops. This is a little bit farther over onto the canvas. I feel like um, looking at them compared now that I could put a little bit more. Oops, wrong color. A little bit more of the berry cobbler in here. And darken this just a little bit. And that looks much better. And then uh, the green could also be a little bit darker on that edge. I think my green's all dried up mostly. And 
and you can blend it into that pink just a little bit. Okay, I think that looks pretty darn good. I love them both. 10 by 10, 12 by 12. Pretty sure this is a 10 by 10. Let me measure it because it looks awfully <laughs> small. Maybe it's because this other one is such a deep canvas. Yep, 10 by 10. Um, this one is a gallery wrapped canvas. I got my mm. both of my canvases at Michael's. Um, and this one is not. This is just a regular sized canvas. This is one that you can frame. This one you do not need to frame. So you can see the difference between the two here. And um, what a fun project. I hope that you guys enjoyed this so much. I hope you painted along with me. You'll want to varnish them after the paint, you know, let the paint cure for at least a day and get good and set into the canvas and then varnish it with a couple of coats of satin varnish is what I like to use um, but um, I just loved creating this one so incredibly fun for me and you can paint your daisy any color that you want how fun is that okay everybody I hope you enjoyed this one I thank you so much for painting along with me and for doing this project and I will see you guys on the next one thanks so much everybody bye bye